Uh, I was hired as the manager of operating systems. And the day I got there, actually, the day I was interviewed there, Bob Pariso said to me, well, if you come here, you can design whatever operating system you want. I said, I'll do a multitasking operating system. So that's why I went to work uh, at Amiga, was the multitasking operating system. First, when I had my first interview, um, I had talked to the recruiter and she set up an interview. And uh, but I, I accidentally blew it off because I went to a, I forgot all about it, I went to an HP beer bust, which um, um, was important too. But, uh, but I looked at my watch at 7 o'clock and I go, oh my gosh, I just missed an interview that I was really looking forward to go to. So the next day I called him up and said, well, gee, I'm real sorry. Um, can I have another interview? Can we schedule another time? And they said, oh, sure, fine. Just come on down whenever, whenever you can. And uh, so I knew that there was a pretty good atmosphere there when, uh, um, when that happened. I'm interviewing with Gary McCoy, who, for whom I was supposed to work. And he takes me back into the software lab where everybody is all over everybody else. And I guess you guys were really used to giving demos to venture capital people and such. So I come through with, with, Gar with Gary and the talking heads are on and I'm awestruck. I'm watching this thing. And, but it was very loud in there. <laughs> very loud and very warm. I mean, if it wasn't the voice, <laughs> there were the fans in the background. And so I'm watching this and Gary's getting very frustrated because he was proud of what we were seeing. And finally just exploded. Knock it off! He screams, and I was trying to calm him down. I'm interviewing from a job and pissing everybody off. So he said, I said, don't worry, Gary. I can understand. I can lip read. Oh. And so after the demo, Sam comes up to me and says, really? Could you read the lips? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, <laughs> well, how close was it? Was it pretty close? I was joking not to make Gary, but I thought, this is perfect. This is the really best company to, to work for. He was really working on that. Well, now that Jay is here, I can tell the story in front of Jay so he can agree that, in fact, it's true. Everybody seems to think Jay is the father of the Amiga. And when you look at Jay and the real father of the Amiga... Yeah, this one, my yeah, it says so right on his page. Even they made the same mistake. It's quite natural. One magazine back in the Amiga days got it right, but everybody laughed at it like it was some sort of a joke, but it was actually the truth. Jay was holding Mitchie in his arms. Right next to Mitchie, it said the father of the Amiga. And up here, it said Jay. And yeah, this is Jay, this is the father of the Amiga. We knew inside that this was a true story because we're sitting there at our desk designing stuff. And Jay, who sat in front of us, was sitting at his desk designing stuff. He'd get to some spot where he wasn't sure. Well, do I put this gate here? Do I put and he thinks about it and see, draw a gate. And he'd look down at Mitchie. And Mitchie would go. And so he'd erase it. He'd erase it. And he'd draw another gate. And he'd look down at Mitchie. Mitchie would go. And so then he would put that kid in. We know because we were there. Mitchy did the Amiga. Jay, you know, Jay did the drawing. You know, it's all right. It's okay. But I wanted you to be here so that you could not shoot me. <laughs> well, allowing, allowing people to be different is terribly important. This guy would come to work and these huge, fuzzy ba ba bathroom slippers. Bare, 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 or bare feet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael Plotnick would come to work in purple, purple, uh, purple sweatpants. Uh, we could go on and on and on this way. I, I, brought, I came to work with my dog, you know. Everybody had something that they wanted to do. And who cares, as long as you get the work done. There was magic. I can't describe it. From the day I walked in and I saw that demo and I saw everybody contributing, cooperating, always a smile. Always a smile, always the uh, uh, optimistic attitude and, and care for somebody else's um, happiness and participation and success, success. One person was not going to let somebody else fail because that would meant the failure of the whole project. We were trying to find people that had, that had fire, that had a spirit, that had a dream that they were trying to accomplish. Carl Sassenrath, the guy that did the exec for the machine, he, you know, was his lifelong dream to do a multitasking operating system that, that would be a work of art, that would be a thing of beauty. 
Dale Luck, you know, the guy that did the graphics. He was, this, was, this was, you know, his undying dream since he was in college to do this incredible graphic stuff. And, and we were looking for people with that kind of passion, that kind of spirit, you know. And more than anything else, the thing that we were looking for was someone that was for people who were trying to make a mark on the world, not just in the industry, but on in the world in general. We're trying to get some, you know, we're trying to look for people that really wanted to make a statement, that really wanted to do an incredibly great thing, not someone who was just looking for a job. the software cave which was a room about I'd say about 30 feet by uh, 15 feet or 20 feet. I started about in, in August of 83 there was no hardware still there was just some drawings on a, on a whiteboard. Most of the hardware in terms of the Blitter, um, the Agnes chip, the Porsche chip and the uh, Daphne chip had already been designed now those Daphne and Porsche you probably may not have heard of, but those were earlier versions of the Denise and Paula chip. <laughs>